Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives and today we're going to be continuing our discussion on the Electroverse storyline as we take a look at Web Warriors number 3. Now, <clears throat> last time on Web Warriors, while Mayday and Gwen were out getting lunch in the Egyptian universe, they wound up stumbling across a band of Electros who were robbing the local bank of silver. While the pair of spider Woman did their best to fend them off, sadly the, sadly the Electros overpowered them and they had to retreat, with Gwen sadly being captured in said retreat. Mayday, of course, went back to Loom World to warn the other web, to warn the other web warriors about this, and thus they returned to the, the Egyptian world to investigate, only to be ambushed by Electros. While the Spideys managed to trick them into retreating, they also quickly realized that if a bunch of Electros from across the multi Multiverse are working together, then that would probably be a big problem, so they decided they would need to start investigating, and thus they went back to Loom World to gather supplies. In the meantime, back with Gwen, the Electro Army had not killed her, but instead had but instead had captured her, with the Electro guarding her being the one that kind of sort of got all this in motion, as it was the Electro from the universe where Manhattan was on the moon, and, well, after that world Spider-Man had been killed, he decided to start roaming the multiverse, trying to find a next big break, and he eventually found that when he met a version of himself who, went, who was a big corporate CEO by the name of Mike, and with Mike's help, they expanded, the, they expanded their operation until it was essentially a multiversal company of Electro, which they literally call the Electroverse, but sadly because of his own incompetence, sadly because of Moon Electro's incompetence, he wound up getting demoted. Gwen managed to use this to her advantage by convincing him to join her side and br and power up her her portal device, which had gotten zapped when she had been battling the Electros, and, that, and to all and give her the coordinates wherever Mike was in the multiverse. And sure enough, they did work together, and it turns out Mike was was back on Moon Electro's Earth because I don't know, maybe just a bit of a screw you, but I don't know, but I don't get it. Either way, with her Either way, Gwen wound up knocking Moon Electro out because she didn't need him anymore and decided to go find a mic herself. But upon finding the head of the Electroverse, she soon discovered that he was, uh, he wasn't exactly human anymore. As when she found him, she found that he was made entirely of electricity and was now just like this big monstrous creature that was hooked up to all these various generators and so forth. So, that's where the last issue ended. Now, for this, for issue three... We kind of got two storyline. We got kind of got two things going on. Uh, they're still part of the same story, but it focuses on two different sides. One side focuses on Gwen and her dealing with the dealing with the Electroverse behind enemy lines. Or likewise, we got the Web Warriors as they continue their investigation and sadly also deal with the Electro and sadly deal with the Electroverse on their end of things. They kind of keep things simple. I'm going to mostly group everything together as the comic kind of jumps between both plots, which is not distracting, thankfully, but to try and keep things more focused, I am just going to try and focus on one plot over the other for now. And while the issue does actually begin back on Loom World, for the sake of continuity, since the last issue ended with Gwen confronting, Mi confronting Mike, I'm going to start things off with her end. And so, with Gwen, she wants... To with Gwen, she is naturally she is kind of naturally going what the hell when seeing the big electric guy. And we soon learn exactly why the heck Mike is now suddenly this big monster. This is his precaution against working alongside other versions of himself, because well, Mike may be this big, successful corporate CEO who is so famous on his world that his name can be that he now has his own brand of electric cars. But he's also still an Electro, and he inherently knows that he is untrustworthy. And we know, and while he probably, and while he is ready to work alongside other versions of himself, her, ah, while he is willing to work with other versions of himself in order to take over the multiverse, he also knows that the other Electros may be just as ambitious as himself, and will probably very easily want to stab him in the back. So he decided that he needed to have a precaution on that. Which is where the big electric thing came in. You see, as Mike wound up, wound up look, searching through the multiverse, he managed to find a world where the Kree Empire had managed to take over the Earth and made it their throne world. And the thing with the Kree is that they actually have a hive mind that control that controls everything, known as the Supreme Intelligence. And so Max used that to hit. So Mike, Mike used that to his opportunity by sending in a group of Electros to go in there and steal the technology that created the Supreme Intelligence. After that, he had his team of Otto Octavius's work on a machine to essentially replicate it. Except in this case, rather than using the the hot, rather than having it be the Kree hive mind that's the central base, Mike had the Mike had Max Dillon be the central base of operation and hooked himself right into it. And sure enough, the combination of the Kree, and sure enough, with the Kree technology, 
it essentially transformed Mike Dillon into a hive mind. And how they keep it going is that at one of every 10 Electros that they recruit, they get, get hooked up into this collective. And the more Electros get hooked up into it, the bigger it expands. And sure enough, eventually Mike Dillon became much more than just your plain old average Electro. He became what they call the Battery. And he, and of course... His, his currents run through pretty much the entirety of the Electroverse. And, yeah, pretty much as he's explaining all this, Gwen, he also talks about how Gwen and her Gwen and the rest of the Spideys are pretty much screwed because, well, they know everything about them. After all, it was the Inheritors jumping around the multiverse and killing Spideys that alerted them about the, that alerted them to the whole multiverse fiasco. They have a team of Auto Octaviuses that look into the histories of each world that they that they go to if they need if they need it if they need to get up to speed on something and and. The battery even admits, which yeah, I'm just gonna call him the battery from now on. The battery even admits that he said that a team of Electros is already being sent to Loom World to try and to try and overtake it, which I'll talk about when we get to the Web Warriors. So he thinks that Gwen, so Gwen, he thinks that Gwen should just give up now because, well, she's outclassed. As such, Gwen, well, she kind of gets tired of listening to the supervillain ranting and decides, screw this, I'm just gonna punch you. And she does try to smack him, and all that really does is hurt her hand, which even the battery just kind of scoffs at. But Gwen also begins noticing something else. You see, while the you see while the bait well while the battery talked about how this moon base is so well fortified that it can get hit by an asteroid and not and not break, Gwen asks one very good question because the thing is the room they're in has windows and so she asks, are those windows also reinforced or is that just plain glass? At which point the battery realizes what the hell she's talking about and she suddenly breaks right through the glass. Glass. Thankfully, before she's jettisoned into the vacuum of space, Gwen is able to shoot out a couple web lines and zip back to the base, only now this time to the area where she had webbed up Moon Electro. And sure enough, she blo she goes in, grabs him from where she webbed him, and runs into a hallway, only to run into a couple Electro guards. Thankfully, she's able to send them flying by opening a door and sending him into the vacuum of space, which they're fine, they're wearing space suits. But, she, but Gwen quickly realizes she can't stay here, and, well, with what, with what the battery said, she also can't go back to Loom World either. As such, she ends up waking up Moon Electro and wants him, and wants him to power up her her watch again so she can get out of there. For of course, Moon Electro wonders why the hell he should do that because, well, she clearly knows that she's not on his side. But with which she responds with, "Okay, yeah, fight me, go ahead, and whether you win or lose, I have fun explaining to the ba battery why you brought me here." At which point, yeah, Moon Electro realizes he's kind of kind of screw he's kind of shot himself in the foot here, so he complies and get, gets himself and Gwen out of get off the moon. Me at any time back with the Web Warriors. Let's so we got we're gonna need to rewind a little bit. Basically, after they went back to Loom World, they essentially just gathered whatever the technology they could and then went back to the Egyptian world to kept try and get any traces of the Electros that they could. And while and when they did that, they left Anya behind to essentially guard the to guard Loom World. This stuff admittedly happens in between issues, and I'm guessing, and I almost thought it was a continuity error, but it's clear, but we did see Anya in the last issue while fighting alongside the other Spideys, and they, and at the end of the issue, they did end up going through a portal, so I'm just assuming that basically they went back to Loom World, got some stuff, and then went back, and Anya just, st just stayed behind to keep guard. But in the meantime, Anya and Karn are just kind of talking, but as they're chatting, the Karn senses some reverberations in the web. I'm guessing that's his version of a spider sense, because, well, he's the master weaver. And so Anya hides because Karn says that their, their foe's approaching. And sure enough, just as the battery said, a bunch of Electros come in and begin, and pretty much just say they own the place now. As they go... They pretty much, as they wind up going up to Karn and demanding to know where the rest of the Spideys are, since if they're not here, they must be somewhere... And so, uh, and so, as they're trying to intimidate the Karn, Anya ends up calling the Web Warriors and lets them know the Electros are that the Electros are there. So, uh, the, of course, the instant the Spideys hear that, they want to try and warp back to Loom World, but sadly, the 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 code to go back is not working. Which and but Victor admits that maybe because of the electrical interference of the Spideys, it's 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 essentially blocking them all from Loom World. Thankfully, he using his available technology, but Victor says he can find a way around this. But in order to rig something up, it'll take a few minutes. In the meantime, as such, to try and keep everything occupied, Anya just begins taking out the Electros one by one, while one Electro, who's like a luchador Electro, keeps trying to intimidate Karn and talk about how if you, go, you have to work with the battery or you die, so what's it going to be, yada yada, blah blah blah. And in the meantime, I, what I find hilarious is that Karn is looking directly at him as he does this, so he can clearly see behind him just Anya gra just webbing up Electros and pulling them aside. It's admittedly just kind of funny in retrospect, but after... 
Luchador Electro gives his ultimatum, Anya comes in and delivers a swift kick to his face. As such, the other Electros that are there, but we didn't see, end up going on the attack, and so Anya tries dealing with them, but thankfully that's when the Web Warriors show up and suddenly the fight begins. Unfortunately though, Luchador Electro quickly realized that they were also outclassed, so while, so while he's down, he's not out, and he does end up calling in reinforcements, and sadly, the, 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 cha the chamber of the... The, the Chamber of the Web of Life and Destiny gets sadly overrun by a bunch of Electros, and once again, the Web Warriors are severely outclassed. So, unfortunately, they have to find a way out. Un find a way out, and since the amount of all these electric-powered supervillains are in one room, their watches aren't aren't teleporting them out. So they sat. So they have to use the web manually in order to open up an, in order to open up a portal. And while Karn is able to successfully open a portal, the Electros quickly realize that that. The, that they're trying to make a getaway, and they all just grab the web and zap it, which in turn fries Karn. It doesn't kill him, thankfully, but he is severely weakened. Thankfully, the web warriors are able to take advantage of the portally open and get out, taking Karn with them, and so they essentially have to abandon Loom World and leave it to the Electros. But which world do they go to? Simple. I think it's Earth 8... Oh, hold on. I just want to reconfirm. It's hard to remember all the Earth numbers. It's part of why I sometimes just give them nicknames. It's Earth 803, the world of Lady Spider, which I have to remind you, is set in the Victorian era. So there's not really a lot of electrical energy to utilize, although they did have their own version of Electro, but we're not here to talk about that. As such, the Web Warriors arrive and decide that this is the best place to hide, but upon arriving, Lady Spider pops in and wants to know what the heck they're doing here and if there's maybe another war going on, which Billy confirms that yeah, but more on their but more war on the home front, so to speak. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we can we can cut back to Gwen and Electro and Moon Electro now, and we soon see which Earth that Gwen that Gwen and that Gwen and he went to, the MC2 universe, which would no, which when which is you know is Mayday's world. As a basically, May, Gwen is here for backup, and as she spe specifically from the Parker household, as that she and Moon Electro go up to the door, and who's there to answer them? But Uncle Ben, who is happy to see them, especially when Gwen says that she's friends with Mayday. As such, Gwen immediately starts asking if they start saying, "Yeah, we don't really know each other, but can you? Ask, but I can. But can we? Ask, but I kind of need some help." But Moon Electro, who is still a giant jackass, ends up running past Gwen and ends up grabbing Uncle Ben in a sleeper hold with the intent of shocking his head if Gwen doesn't comply with his demands. However, there is one thing that Moon Electro did not know: this is the Uncle Ben of Earth three one four five. You know. The world where he got bitten by the spider instead, and as such, he, as such, Uncle Ben is able to easily just flip right out of Moon Electro's grasp and then deliver a flying kick straight to his head and knocking him out again. And so Uncle Ben quickly realizes that some. And so while Uncle Ben says that maybe he can't really get fly with the younger kids like he would, and yeah, like they, well, he can't really go with the younger kids like or. While he can't run with the kids as much, well as he used to, he's expecting that Gwen's here to help, which is where this issue ends, so to speak. So. Again, thoughts on my thoughts on this issue. It's again a mostly action-packed issue, but it but it still kind of lays the foundation for more plot stuff and keeps everything going. In this case, this one raises more of the tension and helps raise the stakes when it regarding the Electro Army. Case in point, the battery. Ba ba because here's the thing. He wasn't lying. The battery is, in fact, a hive mind of electros, and because and while most electros are stupid, the base center, the baseline for all the electros is Mike Dillon, the corporate CEO version who helped keep this all together. Even with even if all the other electros are idiots, when you start combining all of them together into one co into one hive mind with this tech savvy corporate scumbag as the center. You're gonna. It's definitely something. It's gonna be a very. The for what you're gonna create is definitely gonna be very something very intelligent and can think and can easily think things through. Add on the fact that again, it's a hive mind of electros, and electro himself is already exceed is already very powerful by virtue of being able to control electricity. So condense all of the condense like thousands of electros into one body, and it makes it clear this guy is very powerful, and because he's made of pure electricity, as as he said last issue, the, he has no butt to kick. He's Gwen even tries punching the tries even punching him, and all it really does is that she hurts. And all it really happens is that she hurts her hand. So this immediately sets the so this immediately bring, make, make, bring, raises the stakes higher. As now we know, we're not just dealing with an army of electros, but this exceedingly powerful 
thing that can probably very easily outthink the Spideys, as well as match them in terms of power. Even if they like, even if it was just him versus the the Web Warriors, it's clear that the it's clear the battery would probably outclass them in in every sense of the word. So it definitely still raises the stakes. Although what I still like is that despite the fact that he is like, like more more intelligent than a lot of other Electros. He's still an electro because he does make a fatal mistake. You have a base that's made that can withstand that you or that you created to withstand an asteroid field, and yet you fail to account for the fact that someone with super strength could probably easily break through your glass windows. I kind of find I like that. I kind of find I like that. It's like a simple mistake that you would overlook, but when he quickly realizes what Gwen's about to do when she when she blasts through his window into space, he's like, wait, what? It's I don't know. I just kind of like it when the when the villains have that. Oh shit! Moment. I and, and seeing that and seeing that there, despite how grandiose and 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 amazing the how much considering how much the battery hypes himself up and says, "Oh, you're outclassed. You can't beat me." Just seeing Gwen like, "Hey, that one, oh, this one was glass," and him just having that aha moment. I think it's fun. I like that. It just helps him. Uh, it's nice seeing the villain get knocked off his pedestal for a little bit. I like it. I like it. In the meantime, what keeps the in the meantime, it's not just the bat the, the emergence of the battery that keeps the plot in that keeps the, the tension high, but also the, the but also the Electro versus assault on Loom World because well, at the end of the day, that's the home base of the Web Warriors. It's where the Web of Life and Destiny is. It's how they it's how the Spideys are able to access other worlds across the multiverse. But and so and with the and so having the Electros have it directly target that and take it it helps raise things. It helps raise this. It helps raise things up because because the, the web of life and destiny is the very foundation of the multiverse, and we know the electros aren't going to destroy it. They're not stupid enough to destroy the very foundation of reality. But the fact that they are now in control of it is a bad thing. These are very like like we like we know with Electro, he's a psychopath with exceedingly immense power. So imagine a bunch of him now having access to the very to, to the very thing that dictates reality and well you know it's a recipe for a disaster so it may, so the fact and the fact that the, the fact that the electros were able to easily take it by just outnumbering the web warriors it definitely makes you go oh shit and because they now have access to the web of life and destiny getting more reinforcements is going to be a problem for the spideys because we already know that the electros can screw with them jumping between universes as their electric fields mess with their watches but now have access to the thing that controls all this and it makes it clear that they may not be that get it that if they want that if the web warriors want to even get a chance of taking them down they need to find a way to work around this thankfully they still showcase that they're that while the web warriors are down they're not out so to speak after all they didn't get karn karn was able to was able to escape with the rest of the web warriors to earth 803 which i think yeah is it earth 803 i i'm sorry again i have to confirm because i don't memorize earth numbers except for earth 3145 and that's only because that was the post-apocalyptic earth that we keep revisiting yeah, it was Earth 803. Basically, yeah. The, so yeah, he goes with them at Earth 803, and when the Spideys may be, and the Spideys may be, may be deprived of Loom World, but now, but they can still think and work things through because even in even on Lady Spider's world where it's set in the Victorian era, she's still very much tech savvy. So I kind of like that, and what makes it, and what I like too, especially, is that we see that on both sides of the story, things are still going forward. Yes, both. Yeah, the spy, the Web Warriors have been dealt a heavy blow. But they still keep thinking of ways to work around it. The Web Warriors manage to escape to a world the Electros can't follow because there's no electricity that they can take advantage of. So they can work. So they're working with that. So that gives them kind of an advantage. Though the Electros could still get, so could still probably go there. Especially since I know that world had an Electro, but whatever. Joe, on which on top of that, while they're there, they end up running into Lady Spider, who again, it's nice to see her again and have her get pulled into the fray, which. That's another thing with having a team book. You can actually kind of switch out members every once in a while. And since again, this deals with the multiverse, we get to, it allows us to see more. It allows us to go back and revisit other Spideys we saw in Spider Verse. So again, nice to see Lady Spider again. And in that same vein, with Gwen, we see how things are going with her as well. She's still cut off from the team and has to rely on this. Has to rely on an Electro to help to get her around. She still she still is trying to help get. She's still trying to get reinforcements and utilize what she's learned to try and to try and take down the to try and take down the battery in the Electroverse in her own way as she travels to the MC2 universe and recruits Spider-Ben because, well, he's still a Spider-Man and while he may be an old guy, he's still very capable and, ki and, can, kick and can kick major ass, like which he showcased when Moon Electro tried to threaten him and then he just flipped around him and then kicked him in the face. So, 
Again, I like that they keep things going. The tension is still high, and the Spideys have been dealt a blow, as we know who the big bad is, we know he can't be easily harmed, and Loom World has been taken. But the Spideys are still in one piece, they can still get, they can still try their best, and on the and overall, I think, overall, I think it's still a fun, I think it's still a fine issue. Like I said, keeps the, keeps the tension high, keeps the action good, and definitely, and, and while it does, and while we do see heavy blow dealt to the Spideys, they're not out for the count, so... It's overall still nice, and I look forward to and it's still good, and it's, it does lead to some more good stuff later. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson. Hopefully, I'll see you on Tuesday as we look at issue four, and I hope you have a good Saturday. Take care.